Welcome to the SVG TV News for Thursday, November 12th. I am Khalil Cato with the details. Leader of the New Democratic Party, Dr. Godwin Friday, said a crisis in governance exists in SVG following the November 5th general elections in which the Unity Labour Party won the majority of the seats, but the NDP gained the popular vote. In an address to the nation last evening, Dr. Friday said the people spoke by voting more for the NDP than the ULP, thereby indicating that they prefer the ideas, plans and vision laid out by the NDP in the campaign, of which he is proud. The NDP leader added that though the people voted for change, this was sadly deferred, with the ULP gaining more seats and thus forming the government under the first-past-the-post system. He said despite this, it is a fundamental and treasured principle of democracy that a government that doesn't have the majority, a majority of the people, lacks a mandate from them to govern. Lacks democratic legitimacy. For anyone to try to explain this away, as Dr. Gonzalez has tried, denies the reality of the argument that the ULP itself made in 1998 when they won the popular vote and the NDP won the most seats. As they argued then, we assert now that the outcome of the recent elections means that those in government have now lost the moral authority to govern. This creates a crisis of governance in our nation that will only be resolved when the people are again governed by a government that has the support of a majority of the people. Dr. Friday said the November 5th, in the November 5th general elections, the NDP secured swings in 13 of the 15 constituencies by reducing the margins of victory in seats won by the ULP candidates in 2015. He said this is a remarkable achievement for the NDP and shows a fundamental realignment of the country's politics, which augurs well for the movement to bring about a change led by the NDP. I thank you, the people, for the tremendous confidence and support given to our team and for voting for change. But we must finish the job. The declared results show that after four terms in government, the ULP clings on to power precariously, having eked out severely reduced majorities in seven of the nine seats with the slimmest of margins in North Leeward a single vote. Never let anyone tell you that your vote does not matter. Never tell anyone likewise. Never let anyone bargain or sell their vote to anyone because the future of the nation can literally hang on a single vote. The NDP leader said the people's dire need for change was heightened during the campaign and with increased vigor and determination, they will work to bring about that which the people voted for. He said the NDP will neither be silenced nor marginalized. We must commit ourselves to that task, for in completing it, we will usher in a government that has earned the support of a majority of the people and thereby set in place the essential foundation upon which our future prosperity and happiness depends. To succeed, this must be a collective effort. The NDP will be the vessel that carries that movement to its successful outcome. It is our duty, and we are committed to continue providing constructive leadership that will guide our activism and lead to a brighter future for all our people. Dr. Friday thanked the young people who rallied behind the NDP during the campaign and encouraged them to remain engaged in the political process. He said their voice was loud, strong and inspiring and that now more than ever the country needs them. Become and remain part of the growing movement that is necessary to bring the change our country wants. As for me, I am not going anywhere. I love my country too much. This is my life's work, and I am honored to do it. The more people I meet and share a smile with, engage in a brief conversation or other activities with, 
the more that love grows. Therefore, I am as committed as ever to the task of bringing change as urged by you, our people, and as God Almighty permits. In all things, his will be done. Local government in SVG may not be reinstituted anytime soon. During his appearance on NBC Radio yesterday, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzales was asked about the possibility of the reintroduction of local government, to which he replied that some countries, including SVG, are too small to support local government arrangements. Dr. Gonzales, however, agreed that more discussions need to be held in communities to build community leadership at all levels. He noted that a local government reform exercise was carried out, but what the Commission of Inquiry came up with was not workable for SVG. That is to say, they wanted to have elections in the communities for local government. The place is just too small for that, because what you will have, how are, you, how are they going to be funded? Are they going to be funded by taxation on people? Clearly not, because people don't want to be taxed twice. We're not dealing with England and we're not dealing with America. So, the broad framework which I had suggested, um, which didn't get the support, is that they got support from the cabinet, but I'm talking about general support. I saw a place where you, should, you could have appointed the persons from within the NGO community, from people otherwise, um, in the community, persons from the government, and have the parliamentary representative for the area in which the local government sit as ex officio, so that there's a voice with a person who is, who is already elected as parliamentary representative. Carlos James, who won his seat in the North Leeward constituency by one vote today, said that he has moved past the out that outcome, noting that he has emerged the winner at the end of it all. James, however, said that it was unfortunate that more than 30 ballots were rejected, claiming that the majority were votes for the Unity Labour Party. You know, a lot of the, the rejected um, votes here in, in North Leeward, majority of them were, were actually persons who voted for the Unity Labour Party. And very unfortunate that some of the voters were disenfranchised. You know, having gone in a line in the sun or the rain, waited patiently to exercise um, their, their, their right to vote and, you know, having to go on through that experience. I am I'm not too much concerned about it from my end because I know majority of the people in North Leeward voted for the Unity Labour Party. They wanted to see um, an elected member of parliament who can serve within the cabinet and most of them knew that the Unity Labour Party was going to be returned to office and naturally um, that is something that we saw trans um, which transpired. James said moving forward voter education and training would be some things to look into. And we have to look at in terms of perhaps um, I, I know there, there was training but and, uh, we have to see how best we can, can improve on, on the capacity of of the, the persons who were there. Um, we had some of the ballots um, missing stamps and, and signatures from the presiding officers and it's something that we, we, we're going to have to work on. Regarding the constituency, James said he will continue to work with the people of North Leeward for its further development. I've, I've never left my constituency. I've, I've really, and persons will tell you, um, for the last five years I've been on the ground in North Leeward. Um, something I, can't, I will continue to do. Um, it's, it's nothing new to me. Um, I'm from the people and basically I, I plan to give a lot more attention to, to North Leeward, especially where we're, we're focusing on tourism, but develop a lot of the tourism sites on the Leeward side of the island as well. Um, we have to focus on that immediately. I, I came into the office today and I, I looked at um, you know, the, the the estimates, the proposals for the estimates for 2021, and we have to look at you know how we can enhance that and and, and add, add you know add value to to what has already been a superb job by by um, Minister Mackey. 
The Electoral Office today released the final results of the November 5th general elections in which the Unity Labour Party, the ULP, won a majority nine seats to six for the NDP, the New Democratic Party. But the NDP came away with the majority vote, a total of, the, of 32,902 to the ULP's 32,421, a difference of 481 votes. The leaders of both parties registered the largest margins of victory, 1,993 for Dr. Ralph Gonzalez in the North Central Windward constituency and 1,667 for Dr. Godwin Friday in the constituency of the Northern, of the Northern Grenadines. The North Leeward constituency returned the smallest margin of victory, a single vote, in favor of Carlos James of the ULP. This year, there was a total of 319 rejected ballots. This was 28 more than in the general elections of 2015, when there was a total of 291. The bulk of rejected ballots were, was in East St. George, a total of 54 spread throughout the polling stations, and in North Leeward, where there were 39 rejected ballots, of which 20 were from a single polling station situated at the Learning Resource Center at Cane Grove. A ballot is rejected if the X is not marked correctly on the vote, and the vote cannot be, therefore cannot be given to any of the contesting candidates if the ballot is not marked at all, or if the voter marked the X that should be marked the ballot for more than a single candidate. A newly appointed Minister of Tourism, Carlos James, who also has the responsibility for civil aviation, sustainable development and culture, spent his first day on the job today at his ministry in the National Insurance Services Building. James, who replaces Cecil Mackey, told SVG TV News today that he understands his role and the task that is ahead of him. He is prepared to move to improve on SVG's tourism product, building on the work done by his predecessor, noting that as it is his first day, he has been having meetings with his staff. First um, cabinet session um, yesterday, today, I'm on, on the job. I've met with the permanent secretary. I've met um, briefly with the tourism head of the tourism authority and my um, assistant secretary. Um, naturally, as the day, days go by, I'm going to have um, uh, consultations with all of the, the departmental heads. Um, it's important that we, on the right track, we have the, uh, the agenda set out in, in terms of how we're moving forward into, into the new budgetary year. Minister James said that SVG's tourism sector, like in other Caribbean countries, has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and will be looking at ways to bounce back with the help of the relevant stakeholders quite happy to work along with all the key stakeholders um, in the tourism, um, hotel industry and you know even the top taxi operators. Um, I'm quite excited to work with all the key stakeholders um, to ensure that we develop this brand. We focus um, on, on, on enhancing our, our image as, as, a, as a tourism destination and importantly um, sustainable development. It's, it's a new portfolio under the Ministry of Tourism. Um, we, we want to ensure that we have all the right um, skill sets available to us so that we can draw on the resources to, to enhance um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a country that is green, a country that is, um, has, is environmentally friendly, friendly um, and also a country that is a destination that a lot of persons will be looking to come to visit in the, in the near future. James said that one of the important areas to look at is ecotourism as he seeks to encourage domestic tourism. Civil aviation is a new portfolio in James's ministry. And he says he sees his experience as a legal practitioner being an asset in this area. Being in private practice as a lawyer for 10 years, but um, I've been Speaker of the House, Deputy Speaker of the House, I've been in the Parliament. Um, I, I think my background in law would, would, would um, benefit significantly the Ministry of Civil Aviation, a lot of regulatory um, you know, processes and so on to, to take shape and, and to, to develop um, that, that particular portfolio. Um, I, I bring that type of experience to, to the, the civil service and, and to the administration of, of the Ministry of Tourism, um, Sustainable Development, Civil Aviation and Culture. 
US-based Vincentian musical maestro Frankie McIntosh is among 12 distinguished people from the Caribbean who will be conferred with an honorary doctorate from the University of the West Indies at its graduation ceremony next year. The conferment of the title of Doctor of Letters on McIntosh is for his work as a musical director and composer. The university said in a release that its graduation ceremonies will take place from January 11th to 16th next year and will be a mix of blended virtual formats. Around 8,500 students across the region will graduate. The UWI said in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic, its graduations will retain the tradition of recognizing Caribbean excellence through the conferral of honorary degrees awarded for a wide variety of fields such as music, theater, public service, medicine, agricultural science, and entrepreneurship, among others. The awards were approved by the University Council, which has sanctioned over 500 honorary degrees since 1965. The 2020 honorary graduates are to be recognized for their outstanding contributions to regional and international development. Some of the other persons who will receive honorary doctorates include Paul Keynes Douglas, Sir Kennedy Simmons, former leader of St. Kitts Nevis, and Professor Edgar Julian Duncan for his pioneering work in plant biotechnology or plant tissue culture. The Salvation Army Christmas Kettle Appeal 2020 will be launched tomorrow. This year, the launch will be done differently due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Administrator of the Salvation Army, Captain Ernest Gashelin, told SVG TV News that they are working towards the $100,000 target, which they did not meet last year. He said they would still like to help the poor and needy during Christmas, noting that this year it is being celebrated during a pandemic. Well, during Christmas time, we go to, uh, to the homes, we go to the female prison, we go to the hospital, and we, we send hampers to other locations as well. Where we cannot go, we partner with one or two persons to go for us and distribute. And uh, that's what we do. But basically, is almost every day people come here and ask for assistance. Captain Gashelin said that six stores have agreed to have kettles at various locations. We have a Sunrise supermarket in Annesville. We have uh, Corey's Pharmacy. We have People's Pharmacy. We have Singer, Coats and a Massey supermarket. It's voluntary. We, we, while I'm here, I say we call, we call on people, appeal on people to come and give their support. One hour, two hours, it will be very good because sometimes people, when they are collecting, they need time to go to eat, and sometimes they have nobody to replace them. So they will have to eat where they are, or sometimes leave the pot for a time. So anybody could come. If you cannot come for a day, you could come mean day time, when it's lunch time, so that the person can, can go and eat. The Salvation Army administrator said that this year their feeding programs have been exhausted with hundreds of persons benefiting and more still reaching out for assistance. We were able to you know, assist many. I, I still cannot tell you how many persons we, we assisted. And up to, up to this last Saturday, we, we were sharing food boxes to, to people. So we're still doing uh, feeding programs and we're still doing all the activities, the children home as well. We still continue to do that. Uh, and the only thing we, for the sharing of the hampers, we may not do it the same way as we had last year in, in, the, uh, in, in the church. On Wednesday, St. Vincent and the Grenadines received confirmation of one new COVID-19 case. The traveler is a returning national who arrived with a negative PCR test result from the BVI on November 4th, having transited through Dominica and Barbados and was negative on, by entry screen for COVID-19. The Ministry of Health said on Friday, November 6th, however, that it was informed by the Ministry of Health in Barbados that this traveler, while in transit in Barbados, was tested and a positive result returned. Subsequent in-country retesting, as required under the existing multi-tiered system, gave a positive result. A release from the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, dated November 11th, 
said the Carfa Public Health Laboratory confirmed the positive test today. The traveler was in mandatory quarantine when their initial positive result was determined and has since been in isolation at an approved facility. The traveler will remain in isolation until cleared with by two negative PCR results. Contact tracing of this new case has so far revealed that no additional positive cases are in existence. However, further contact tracing and testing is ongoing. St. Vincent and the Grenadines has now recorded a total of 77 COVID-19 cases, 74 of which have recovered with three active cases, all of which were imported from countries categorized as high risk.